together to create unified neighborhood partners because all the organizations are going to be participating in the development of all the properties to create one whole community. We, um, in addition, we have the involvement of uh, local groups and community board three. We'll talk more about it in outreach committee. And we have the permanent involvement of Joe NYC, which is a nonprofit asset manager as the long-term owner of the property in Detroit. The project and the vision is to create a total of 390 units among five individual buildings that are gonna be developed in three specific projects. There will be also a community facility space. One is a workforce development center, another community center, and a modest retail space on Flushing Avenue. All the buildings are going to be energy efficient and we'll talk more about that in more detail. And there's gonna be a cleanup of the developments because through the Brownfield Cleanup Program of New York State. You can see here, this slide shows you the, the neighborhood. The, the rendered sites you can see here are the are the four city lots that are going to be developed. The blue, the light blue that you can see here are sites that are already have been developed by members of United Unified Neighborhood Partners. And together we are seeking to try and create this overall connectivity and create a wonderful uh, neighborhood for the community. The sites are, were divided originally in a request for proposals by the city and we've kept them in the monikers that they did. So there's site A, which are two smaller lots, one here on Flushing and one on Bartlett. There's site B, which is a large through lot between Bartlett and Jerry. And there's site C, which is encompasses Group Avenue all the way from Jerry Street and Bartlett. Overall, we're going to be developing those 390 units. There's 387 rental units and three uh, units that are going to be for superintendents. They're divided amongst the three property, uh, the three developments, 78 units on site A, 170 residential site B, and 139 on site C. Um, more importantly, the, the partners really wanted to look at how we could create a balance of incomes and unit sizes. And we did not, we wanted to look at it as all three sites together. So as you see, um, we are following the approach that uh, was done. There was a lawsuit, as many of you are aware, and a settlement with, from the city. And so, that allowed, you know, dictated that we, we approach this based on the financing that was done in 2017. So we have approximately 10 units that are going to be set aside for formerly homeless households. But then we have all of the units are going to be low income, ranging from households at 30% area median income up to 80% and fairly evenly divided across. The mix of units as well, we have 6% of the units are going to be four bedrooms, 11% at three bedrooms, and 25% at two bedrooms. So there'll be this mix of singles and families and accommodating large families in addition. I'll briefly go through the couple of, of the early projects. This project site A, Bartlett Crossing, is going to be on these two sites, one on Flushing and one on Bartlett. It will have a combined 78 units and a super, and it will have a retail space. This site is going to have a, a Euler that will be coming to this community board in January or February because this building here, the smaller one on Bartlett, is a vacant lot and needs to go through disposition. 
all of the other properties went through the rezoning and disposition back in 2009. These are some images of the buildings. This would be the building on Flushing Avenue with the ground floor retail space on the corner. It's taking up this intersection of Gary Street and um, Flushing Avenue. In addition, the smaller building, this is an image from um, the Bartlett Playground, the, the public park on Bartlett Street. And it's looking at this smaller space in between an existing building that was constructed um, since we started. Um, the next project is called Broadway Commons. We call it Site B, and it encompasses a through lot. It would be the it would be um, a much larger. It's actually a little mistake here. It would be 170 units through the site. This project is going to be um, two separate buildings, one facing Bartlett and one facing Jerry Street. And we will create a lovely courtyard garden shared by those two buildings. But even more critical is we are going to be creating a 2000 square foot community space there where we see that as a gathering place and it's a place where there could be a food pantry and there could be on some e some days workshops and community meetings and other things that could bring all of the residents not just from these buildings but from the surrounding neighborhood to come and share and have interchange the the other two buildings in that image are are the building on Bartlett and they would be uh, that would be how they would be rendered. The last site, and I'll let my colleague Drew go through that, is through corners. And you can see it's, it's this uh, rendered building um, and runs on Throop Avenue between um, Bartlett and uh, Jerry. And Drew will be able to talk in more detail about features that we expect in all of the buildings. So, Drew? Hello, everyone. Thanks. If you could just go back to that other slide to present through corners. This is going to be the first phase of the project. So out of the five buildings, we are planning to do this one building starting in early 2022, which is uh, the main reason that we decided to do this presentation today, because construction is right around the corner on this first phase. So this one is 139 units, multifamily, affordable housing, plus one super, as Frank mentioned, live-in supers. And then um, this also contains approximately 7,000 square feet for a workforce development center on the ground floor, which is going to be operated by St. Nick's Alliance. They already have a robust workforce development program, which is going to have a new headquarters in this building. I also wanted to emphasize that all of the Broadway Triangle buildings are going to be all electric buildings with passive house design and solar panels as well. You can see the solar panels distributed on the rooftops here, the blue. So it's very important to us given the environmental impacts of natural gas and so much that's been happening with natural gas pipelines in New York City that we can move away from fossil fuels so these buildings will be all electric and then also passive house, which is a style of construction, which emphasizes air tightness and ventilation to create comfortable living conditions and also uh, much more efficient operations. So the buildings will operate efficiently, which saves money for the building management as well as the tenants who live there. Lower utility bills, better for the environment. Um, so that's that's going to be the gist of group corners, but also that is a prototype for the subsequent phases of the project. And uh, through corners also, we're very proud of the number of three bedroom and four bedroom apartments that we have in the building, which will also have hookups for washer dryers there. So we really want to emphasize families because a lot of times with affordable housing, you don't get as many large units, and we want to do that in this 
project. So once again, here's the, the site map, just emphasizing site C. I think you can keep moving through. And some renderings of site C as well through the corners. So um, one other thing that's exciting is the roof has a little outdoor space. There is a backyard courtyard as well, but on the roof we're including, in addition to the solar panels, some seating and a pergola for folks to do outdoor events throughout the year on the roof. And there's there's the view again from across uh, through Bath Avenue. This is the breakdown of the units. Since this one's coming up in construction ASAP, we just um, wanted to emphasize the affordability here. We really did go low. The entire project has 10% formerly homeless. So for a 140 unit building, that's 14 homeless units here. And then these other MI tiers. So this is a very affordable project, even for affordable housing in New York City. Um, and also I wanted to mention that this whole Broadway Triangle area is a part of the inclusionary housing program. So that was part of the requirement of the rezoning in 2009. It's sort of redundant here since we're already doing 100% affordable housing anyway, but that is why uh, the community board would have received a mailing, and a, or rather, sorry, we sent it over email, but you received our inclusionary housing application prior to this meeting to notify you that we have applied for that program through HPD with 26 permanently affordable units in the building in perpetuity. So I think that's uh, that's the end of the site C section. Um, yeah. We do expect construction to begin on that project in early 2022, maybe March or April or as late as June, but uh, certainly in the first half of 2022. No, thank you. Thank you, Drew. That's great. And, and, and it's in very important because, you know, uh, Riceboro, St. Nick's, La Suez, and UJO have been working collaboratively all the way through. Drew has really been taking the point on this first building and bringing through the design and using the experience that Riceboro has in their past passive house projects to bring that knowledge to all of the buildings. And it's been really um, one of the the areas that the Unified Neighborhood Partners really wanted to focus on is to make sure that we are uh, as extensive um, in our efforts to get as many residents to be aware of the project and to apply and to go through a, uh, an open and fair process in terms of being able to get access. Uh, so what we've done is we've created an outreach committee that includes not just the four of us, but also uh, three community groups, colleagues from community board three, uh, Impact Brooklyn, bed -Stuy Restoration and Bridge Street Development Corp. Many of you may remember that um, this project, though it will be physically in community board one, has a, a preference of 50% of the lottery units, which would be 90% of the units, non-homeless units, 50% of those have a local preference, but the local preference is for both community board one and community. And so we want to make sure because this project is right on the border and that because it's, it's, it's part of the understanding and the settlement that we get that kind of openness. We will be uh, coming back to the community board. We will be contacting as many civic organizations, local leaders, uh, when the marketing process would start. We don't expect, because as Drew mentioned, construction will not begin until probably the, sp the spring of 2022. So it might begin marketing in late spring, or it might be the summer of 2023 is when we might begin marketing for the rent up, okay? We will have multiple language services that will include Spanish, they'll include Yiddish, they'll include Chinese. We'll be able to accommodate anybody uh, that applies. So with that, I think we just wanna open it up for questions. I know our colleagues are, you know, from the other, our members and the executive directors might be in a here to be able to share whatever 
we can with with you all about the plan. Thank you, Frank and Drew. Are there any questions? Are there any yes. questions? Uh, yes, Madam Chair, Steve Chesler. Okay, Chesler. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, thanks a lot for the presentation. Uh, and she's a very uh, exciting project. And um, I would say first, I just love the environmental uh, aspect of it with the solar panels and the passive um, the passive design. I wish that was the in, in all in all electric. I wish that was the standard for all developments. You know, just considering the uh, current climate situation. Um, I had a uh, just a couple questions. One about the courtyard, if that will be publicly accessible, or is it just you know for the residents? And the second thing was regarding the 50% allocation of units to the two community districts. I understand that there's a there's a legal case pending that is questioning uh, the. Legality of whether you know local communities can allocate X amount of units to their local residents. Um, a right. couple private applications that came through were uh, holding off doing that and uh, waiting to see it, waiting for the outcome. Thank you. So, uh, Drew can follow up, but um, the courtyard that you're referring to is part of the Through Corners project, and it really is an interior courtyard. There really is no way it's it's a U-shaped building, and that is um, uh, a, a way to focus for the residents uh, within that building. And in addition, the uh, courtyard that's between the two buildings in Site B, Broadway Crossing, is, is also an interior one for those buildings. Obviously, if there's a community meeting or such, there may be access to those as part of that, but it's not seen as a public park um, and a general access. In terms of the 50% uh, set aside and, and the, the fair housing case that you were referring to, there's a, a, there's a legal case against the city of New York, a fair housing case. Um, it's my understanding because the city of New York settled another legal case, a discrimination case, and that's why the 50% includes both community board one and community board three. I would suspect that that 50% um, will be sustained regardless of whether or not the city loses that larger case because it made, it, it was part of a court order in terms of that. Uh, we will find out and we will certainly have to know before we begin marketing, but it's my expectation that um, even if the city loses its fair housing case, um, because of that court order, this project would continue to be in, in that. But I, I'm not sure. Makes sense. Uh, thank you. Elkins, Willis. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Thanks, Frank, for the presentation. Uh, sorry if I missed this, but I'm curious if there is any a significant commitment to green infrastructure and collecting stormwater uh, on the side or working with DEP to install rain gardens along the sides of the property. This is a priority zone for the city, given that it combines sewage overflow from this area is going to the Navy Yard. So uh, we'd love to know what you're doing to collect stormwater to prevent local flooding and um, protect our sewer system. Drew, do you, you know what we're doing at, at Through Corner? Yes, yes, I can say that we don't actually have those features designed yet, but we are still working on the landscape design. So there will be an irrigation system in the rear yard, and we're also going to be using low flow fixtures uh, as per enterprise green community. So at least the building uses less water overall um, due to the design, but we do not have gray water catchment or you know, bioswales or things like that designed yet. Um, but I think we have more work to do on the landscape design. And we had talked at the beginning of the project about uh, somehow, you know, once all five buildings were up, doing a little bit more like street tree work to unify the frontages. So I would say this is still an open topic, 
And um, if we hear that this is something that the community is really interested in pursuing, we can always bring that back to the city and let them know as a way to incentivize um, getting it into the project. But we will. Yeah, that's a not. good. I think um, we will bring this to HPD's attention and uh, see how we can incorporate it. Certainly, um, it's something as Drew mentioned, because we are trying to create a unified approach. We're looking to do something along Bartlett and Ferry Street that would connect these projects and that kind of stuff would be both environmentally and also from a design urban design perspective there. So we will certainly look at that and see if we can't expand our Great, speak. thank you. Can I share my speak? Thank you. Are there any other questions? I don't see any other Mr. Hands. Gross. Okay. Gross. I would like to ask if any parking will be available for the residents. Uh, there is no parking on site. The site is actually serviced by numerous. Uh, uh, there's the G train, there's the elevated buses. So there is no uh, parking on site. And, and Frank, I want to add that we actually do have bicycle storage and right. solar um, stroller storage in our building. So this is really meant to incentivize folks to use everything the city has to offer in terms of alternative modes of transportation. Thank you. Mr. Bagel, you had your hand up. Yeah, my, uh, my race hand doesn't work. May I say a few words? Yes. Thank you. Um, I work for the city. Um, recently, I just retired, but uh, I visited a lot of uh, residents and businesses on Troop. They all suffer serious water flooding, some as much as six feet. So please, you have to do some mediation for flooding because that is the reality that we're all living in now. Thank you. We will look at that. I you know we have our building at the corner of Troop and Jerry at 106 Jerry, and we have our buildings on Broadway. A lot of the flooding is not rainwater wash, it's actually the sewers themselves um, and the backup, you know, and it's whether it's rain or other, but you're right. We will definitely be looking at that. Yes, at and we, we also, this was actually flagged by HPD um, in early stage of design. And so we have no cellar in site C. Yeah, I don't think the other two buildings are as far along in design yet, but the idea would be to try to minimize subgrade space. We have no cellar in site C. And for passive house buildings, this is another resiliency measure because a lot of the HVAC equipment is on the roof. So there's no chance that if you do have water infiltration um, that you're gonna lose power or any of that. I think I think actually all the buildings are gonna be raised up at least six inches above, you know, street level. There'll be a ramp in. Thank you. Santa Michelli. Oh, I uh, thank you uh, for the presentation. Um, yeah, I'm glad the, the house is a passive house system. Um, that's great. Uh, I was wondering, I mentioned that uh, in other uh, meeting in regard to other development, and I mentioned uh, vertical forest, uh, and I was wondering if there were possibility on top of the passive system uh, to add more green, as has been proved, uh, you know, this vertical uh, system, forest system, they actually have a, a tremendous benefit in terms of uh, absorbing water, uh, collecting water, wasting water, but also on filtering air. So the very good uh, expedient against uh, pollution, you know, both uh, filtering particulate and, and pollutant. And also, you know, producing oxygen and adding uh, definitely more green space. I mean, a build, building on this size uh, envision as a vertical green system that can actually be the equivalent of uh, probably seven, ten acres of parks, which we are missing. So I was wondering if it was uh, possible also to think uh, a system of this type, especially in this type of projects. That's all. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. We will look at that. Thank you. Are there any other questions? And uh, sorry, I want to say, and in, in one reference, vertical forest, Stefano Boeri probably uh, you know him very well. You know, there are some uh, kind of known project uh, in Milan, especially, but in particularly, 
in Holland recently, there's a built project, it's not just a concept, and it was an affordable house project, which is a, a true vertical forest. And it's been very actually competitive in terms of the cost of building it. So it's a full vertical forest affordable house. Please look into that, Stefano Boeri. Thank cool. you. Okay. Thank you. Simon Weiser. Simon. Simon, I see a hand up. Can you hear me? I don't know where he is. Is there any other you questions? Hear me? Now I can. Hello, Simon, you hear me? Yes, Simon. Okay, I have a question regarding what I heard Mr. Gross brought up before. Um, I'm just wondering why none of the buildings have any parking at all. Um, I don't say, I mean, a residential and a private developer builds, they have to supply some kind of parking. I mean, there should be no parking at a wall. I mean, uh, all these few hundred apartments, I think uh, it's going to overload the whole area of uh, with part, with uh, with um, the parking issue, I don't, you know, you know, you're trying to uh, understand and low energy and all that kind of uh, enhancements, which is great. But I wonder why this this project should get away with no parking at all. Well, I'm, um, you know, I want to point out that uh, you can see in this image there is this kind of blob building next to ours, running on Harrison between. Jerry and Bartlett, and that's a, a new construction. Actually, it's built now. That doesn't have parking. This area is incredibly well served by public transit. And when the community is pushing us to put as much uh, residential units as possible, we we did not feel that it was appropriate to take up that ground floor space with parking spots. So that will not be part of the development. So who, so who makes that decision? Like how does it, how does it work? The city of I mean, New York, I'm just the, the HPD, and their, their approach to um, the development of new construction in transit rich areas. I got it. What is with on the ground parking? Well, that would be great if this was market rate housing and we could charge people and we could we could amortize that cost over um, a market rate rental. But we're looking at very low income and and the cost to do underground parking, maintain that. And in an area that we heard already from your colleagues floods considerably, having an underground parking is potentially creating a swimming pool for cars in this neighborhood. Frank, do you need to keep the presentation open? Can you close it? Yes. Yes. Okay. Are there any other questions? Can I ask a question? I, I don't know. I can't raise my hand through the machine. It's Trina. And I just so want the, to... the hand raises under the participants. It's the lower, lower right hand corner. You see a little hand and you see a little mic. Okay. Yeah, okay, go ahead and speak. Okay, but my question right is, later. is it just um, the two buildings of Building A that are going to come through Euler and will come to the Land Use Committee? Are the other buildings, is there anything for the community board, an, an opportunity for the community board to vote on it or are those? Um, the, the only building that will come is actually one of the two buildings in Building A. Back in 2009, all of the sites went through the land disposition and rezoning. However, that lot had a building on it at the time. And since 2009, the building that was on that lot was demolished and now it's a vacant lot. So when it went through the rezoning, since it, it's changed and now it's a vacant lot, it has to go through. The other ones will come back and, and we'll present the other ones when we go through the Euler, but there is not uh, an opportunity to vote on those. Thank you. Thank you. 
Are there any other questions? Someone, is there any questions in the, in the Q&A? I don't see any. I'm just having some technical difficulties, but I don't see any. Okay. Yeah. Rabbi, yeah. Niederman. Rabbi Niederman is on song. Yes, thank you. I just want to commend our, our colleagues on this presentation, but even more than on the presentation, on the work that they have put in, in planning it to the every detail to the to the benefit of the entire community and basically making sure that every inch that is uh, that has the possibility of housing people should be used and utilized to the best and still keep it affordable. I believe this is going to be beautify a, an area that that begs for beautification and uh, I thank my colleagues and I thank the community board for their continuing support on this project. Thank you, Rabbi Niederman. Is there any other questions? Uh, yes, Madam Chair, William Vega again, if I may, just, just make a statement. Go ahead. Thank you. Not a second. Uh, yeah, um, <laughs> um, the cell is just five minutes away and if, the residents that move into these uh, new developments know there's no parking. That's not going to add additional car burden to the streets because they won't bring cars. And again, like the rabbi said, this is the project is affordable, and I commend everybody's efforts. Thank you. You're welcome. Are there any other questions or comments? Are there any other questions or comments? Hearing none. Thank you. Uh, uh, yes. There's someone there trying to ask a question, but she didn't put any. Maureen Bowler, but she didn't indicate a question on the Q and A. I'm trying is to get. Anybody, it. Is she online or on the phone? I don't know. She just put a question mark. She says she has a question, so I'm trying to ask her what's the question, but it doesn't come up. Hmm. Hold on. Do we, do we see on the dashboard, Marie, Jerry? Oh, she said it's a new message. Let's see if it came out. She said she's, what? It's it's a above. She's me. she's unmuted, so she should be able to speak. Okay, thanks. Um, okay, go ahead. I just had one very quick question. Um, since they're all electric buildings. Uh, what's the situation with air conditioners and does that mean that there aren't going to be any gas stoves? There will not be any gas stoves and the air conditioning and heating is one uh, uh, system so that all the units will be air conditioned and they will be heated through a central uh, kind of system that will be uh, energy efficient and that way we can we can really make it more energy efficient by doing it and standing, putting it that way. The passive house provides the kind of insulation um, that allows the units to be cooler in the summer without having to have the kind of window air conditioning that we're used to, uh, and I have in my house. But <laughs> um, so it, it will work out a lot better. And yes. Um, you know, there is legislation at the state level to actually make all new construction all electric. Um, and the city is moving that way for city affordable housing projects. In, in part led by groups like Riceboro and others that are doing this kind of passive house and, and model. Thank you. 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 Is there any other questions? Okay, hearing none. Thank you so much, Frank and Drew. We wish you a lot Thank of success. Thank you all very much. I think this is going to be a great project for the community, and uh, we wish you well. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. much. Thank you all. Thank you. Okay, uh, the next item on the agenda is liquor license. Is there any uh, comments on the liquor license? We have some people who signed up to speak. I will turn there microphone on. Okay, thank you. 
Francois, Olivas, And the speaker's names that was called may speak. Then I, you said the mics was on, right, Marie? Are any of the speakers' names called with a better to speak? Okay, hearing none, moving on. Next item on the agenda is the meeting dates for CD1 combined public hearing and board meeting for 2023. The draft of the meeting dates for uh, community board one. Is there any uh, comments on the meeting dates? The calendar for the meeting dates during the year. Is there any comments on that? Okay, uh, hearing nobody, nobody has any comments. Vega, did you have a comment or your hand is still up? Before? No, no comment. My function is not working correctly. No comments. Okay, I see your hand is still up. Okay. Hearing no comments, uh, that that concludes our public hearing. We we'll move right into our board meeting. Can we have a moment of silence, please? Can we dedicate our moment of silence to Dana Rackner, one of our board members who lost a loved one? Thank you. Thank you. Can I have the roll call, please, Jerry? Gina Argento. Bogdan Bakarowski. Here. Lisa Bamonte. Here. Gina Barros. Here. Tian Brooks. Here. Eric Brzez. Here. Thomas Burroughs. Here. Iris Cabrera. Here. Bill Caponegro. Frank Carbone. Here. Stephen Chesler. Michael Chiricella. Yeah. Teresa, Teresa Cinciata. Yeah. Giovanni D'Amato. Here. Aaron Drinkwater. Here. Arthur Dibinowski. Here. T. Willis Elkins. Here. Julia Amanda Foster. Julia Amanda Foster. Yeah. On screen. Chairperson Fuller. Here. Yeah. Joel Goldstein, Joel Gross. Here. Katie Denny Horowitz. Here. Sonia Iglesia. Here. Moisha Indig. Bozena Kaminsky. Present. Thank you. Ryan Coonan. Joel Landau. Marie Leanza. Abraham Liebowitz. I'm here, Marie, uh, John. I'm sorry. Thank you. Like your Abraham Liebowitz. Present, I got you. Thank you. Abraham Liebowitz. Yol Lowe. Trina McKeever. Here. Sante Maselli. Here. Toby Moskowitz. Here. Martin Needleman. Uh, Rabbi Needleman. Here. Thank you. Karen Nieves. Here. Thank you. Mary O'Donnell. I'm here. Janice Peterson. Here. Dana Racklin, Bella Sable, Isaac Sofer. Here. Thank you. Robert Solano. Rob Solano here. Thank you. Del Teague. I'm here, and I just want to mention that I, I forgot to tell uh, the chair that I need to present my uh, uh, land use committee meeting to, uh, report tonight. Thank you. Tommy Torres. 
Tommy Torres. William Vega. Here. Maria Vieta. Present. Stephen Weidberg. Simon Weiser. Yes, here. Uh, Jerry, this is Gina Argento. I just wanted to let you know I'm here. So noted. Thank you. Thirty six members present, Madam Chair, and just a reminder that we need to vote on that calendar. Thank you. Okay, we'll do it after we uh, can I have approval of the agenda. And I'm getting a motion to approve the agenda. Iglesia, make a motion. Second. 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 Okay, Sonia Glaciers, who was the first person to second? David Niederman. Rabbi Niederman. All in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Abstentions? Motion carried. Can I have an approval of the uh, minutes? Have a motion? Joel. I make them. I second that motion, Iris Cabrera. Joe Gross Sorry. and Iris Cabrera, Cabrera, all in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Abstentions? Motion carried. Can I have a motion to approve the calendar for the year for 2020, 22, 22? Joe Gross and William Joel Vega Gross. seconds. And Vega seconds. Joe Gross, um, motion, uh, Vega second, all in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Abstention? Motion approved for the calendar for 2020, 2020, 2022-23. Thank you. Uh, next, we have the public session. Can we have the speakers for the public session, please? <clears throat> trying to get her there we go also uh, marie um, francois oliva was having problem uh, so she was the session's closed now okay to, uh, Le could... yeah the uh leslie wright from parks department you you are not muted leslie Leslie, Leslie? Parks. Leslie Wright from New York's Regional Parks Director, New York State Parks. She's on the call, but she's not answering. Okay, let's let's call the next person. Maybe she'll be ready to get on before we finish. Okay. Francois Olivias. What topic am I speaking on? You were speaking on um, the senior You're, center. You you have two minutes to speak about whatever oh, you like. Okay, no. So um, I'm actually signed up to speak for two things. But so I'm, um, I have been the uh, acting director or acting assistant director of the Swinging Sixty Senior Center. So we just wanted to make sure that all the seniors in the community knew that we're open from nine until four, and we are serving lunch again. So if you can just help spread that in the community, that would be great. Thank you. You're welcome. Now, let's see, where is Leslie? Leslie, you are unmuted. Leslie, move on to uh, Lisa. Bertie? Lisa? 
Yes, hello, I'm here. Um, I was just speaking to, um, this is going back to the bar issue, but I, I don't know if we've passed that or not. Um, you have two minutes to speak. Very good. Okay, so it's about number 12, No Bars LLC, 23 Greenpoint Avenue. It's just an update to the community board from the Greenpoint Coalition. Um, thank you for your time. Uh, last week, uh, the community residents, along with Sante and myself, met with the applicants. The meeting was positive and the applicants altered their application to have the backyard closed at 10 p.m. Uh, we still would like some time to put a community support agreement in place to support this application that was a conditional approved at the last SLA meeting. During our meeting last week, we had asked that the applicants reconsider the use of the backyard as it presents a donut situation with the residential buildings that border the property, which is 44 Kent. As a compromise, we suggested that the closing of the backyard be further amended to close at 9 p.m. And we're dealing with uh, a trigger of the 500 foot rule on the block, which is Greenpoint Avenue and West Street near Transmitter Park. We've not heard back from the applicant prior to this meeting, and we just wanted to continue the dialogue to establish this community support agreement. And I believe um, there was a petition from 44 Kent Street that was circulated to ask the same. Thank you for your time. Who's the next speaker? Marie, who's the next speaker? That was the last speaker, Chair, Chairwoman. Okay. Um, Leslie still didn't get on? No. Okay. Uh, next, we have um, committee reports. Um, I believe Elizabeth Donnelly was also signed up to speak. Who? Oh. Elizabeth Donnelly, I live at uh, 44 Kent Street um, in apartment one. I believe I signed up on the website, but um, you signed up to speak on the liquor license, and your name was called when we was on the liquor license. Okay, well, um, could I? I just wanted to say that I um, live at 201 and in the courtyard that faces pretty much every um, restaurant that now has a backyard pending. Um, and that is a um, few places that were um, approved. And so I, I will, my, I live in rent stabilized housing. I will be directly affected by potential noise, light pollution. And I, and I have a small one year old child who I would like to raise in this apartment, but um, I am worried about what is going to happen with the stress on development that the city has done without any acknowledgement or discussion with the people who live in the buildings and who stand to be directly affected by the noise, light, and um, other um, and construction. And we, in, in our building in particular, we've been dealing with noise pollution, consistent construction, uh, and since about uh, two and a half years, and it is for those of us who can't afford to go to us, who leave, who, those of us who can't afford to leave have been sort of stuck and feeling crazy okay. because your, your, stuff wears. Your time is up. Thank you. Um, so I still had a minute you, left you, from you, swinging cities. Can I please speak on this? Please continue, be brief. Okay, so um, we circulated a petition um, in our building, 44 Kent, 
every single door that was on was knocked on was signed. Um, currently, this block alone, I think last year, I don't have the direct stats with me, but I think, believe there were 270 311 calls about noise complaint. Um, and this year, it went, did go down to 170, which is better. But we really need to have a conversation about the noise pollution that is happening. Um, on the this Furthermore, um, we need to have a walk through a block with DOT and sanitation. The building that coming up next to us, which I believe is 11 stories, is going to have a two way garage that will be exiting and entering on Greenpoint Avenue. So, if we want to also have the conversation about safe streets, we really need to have pedestrian walkways put in and a stop sign. Thank you. Thank you so much. And then also, one last thing we need to talk about containerized garbage for the restaurants because we have transmitter I'm park. I'm sorry, your time is up. A French box. Thanks, sorry. Madam Chair? Yes. There is a gentleman, I think Isaac Henderson, that said he signed up. I'm not sure, Marie. What is his name? Isaac Henderson. H Henderson, yes. He had signed up to speak during public session, but he wasn't there before. Yeah, so he's, he just said he would like to speak. Okay, uh, he got one minute since he's late. Hi, I don't think I was late, but uh, hi, good evening. I'm Isaac Henderson from Lendlease, and I wanted to speak related to our application um, for the waterfront uh, park that's at the India Street Pier. Uh, first, I just wanted to thank the committee for its thoughtful consideration of our application and its recognition of our outreach and response to the community over the past year. Uh, we very much appreciate all the support and input we received from the entire community and the park itself, and much of which has been incorporated in the design. Um, we're really confident that we're developing a place that will be a significant benefit to the entire community for many years to come, as well as maintaining and operating the New York City water taxi that is sort of the front door to all of Greenpoint. We appreciate the committee's support for our proposed changes to the screening and railing requirements within the short public way, and in appreciating we'll continue to consider the community's recommendations and heard at the committee hearing. However, I did want to speak briefly on the committee's recommendation to exclude the Indian Street Pier fencing from our waiver request. Uh, the Indian Street Pier and the connected ferry landing as a significant community benefit and one that Lend Lease is dedicated to maintaining for years to come. We are also 100% dedicated to maintaining the floating pier so it can remain as a primary stop along the New York City water ferry route. While we derive no revenue from the Indian Street Pier, the New York City water taxi or the waterfront park itself, the cost of maintaining and operating these areas is a significant cost for us and will be years to come. While we understand the committee's desire to replace an existing fence that's been in place since the pier was built because of the significant costs and resources, we also believe these your, resources your time is up, sir. are better utilized towards um, creating a world-class publicly accessible waterfront park pier and is sustaining a sustainable and safe fair landing. Please system. summarize. In operation for many years to come. I just want to finish real quickly. Uh, we hope the board can consider supporting the entire application before the community board, including the requested waiver for the railing along the pier. Thank you very much for all your hard work and consideration. We look forward to continuing our discussions with the community. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay. Um, committee reports, SLA. All right. Um, yeah, um, hang on. Where am I? All right, you all received the report um, because of scheduling conflicts in September, even though we had set our meetings a year in advance. Um, we did not hold a meeting in September. So all of September's items and all of October's items were put on our October meeting. And then with the new nine o'clock end time, um, we didn't get to everybody. So a lot of people were postponed because of, you know, we have huge numbers of applications in this community board. Um, the report that you have is for the items that were on the public meeting of September 14th, there was uh, 32 new applications. Eight of those requested postponement by the um, applicants. Nine of them we postponed because we didn't have time to get to them. Uh, we denied, we recommending denial of 10 for those 10 people didn't show up to the to committee meeting. So by not showing up to the committee meeting, they're not following the requirements of the community board review. Um, we recommended four applicants for renewal and one item 
um, we took off the calendar because we've already passed that one. That was item number 20, which was McCarran Park. Um, then for calendar items that were on the public calendar for October 12th, um, there was two, 15 new applications. Um, three, the applicants requested postponements. We postponed six of them because we couldn't get them because of time. Two of them, we recommend denial because the applicants did not appear. Um, we recommend the um, approval of four, but one was a conditional approval, which is item number 12, no bars, which is what some of the public speakers spoke about, um, which was to have a meeting and reach a community agreement uh, with the, um, the block associations, community organizations on West Street. Um, and then we recommend a, uh, on the renewals, we'd made no recommendations because we were not able to get to them, but we clearly have a problem with item number 10 out of the September 14th calendar, um, which is, um, the, um, what's, that? what's the name of that one? It's the, um, Williamsburg winery, I believe it's called. And then we have a problem with um, number 17 was not a renewal. It's a new application. So um, I don't know how we want to handle this. Like the last meeting, I said, just do the report the way it was. But I think people are going to want us to pull out uh, number 12. And I believe that they're going to want us to pull out number 10 on the renewals of September. So anybody want to make a motion on any of this? Bogdan yes, or like somebody? Make a motion. Bogdan would like to make the motion to approve the uh, committee recommendation. Arthur, Final seconds that motion. What, what was the motion? The motion was to approve the committee recommendation. Please. What was the committee's recommendation? That's that's a Tom. If you can just explain once again, please. I believe Bogdan's making a recommendation that we approve the report as it's submitted. Um, that's correct. Arthur Lewandowski would like to second that motion. Okay. Can I have a roll call vote, please? Yeah, there's no objection. We can't the motion is call. to accept the motion is to accept the committee's report as written. Yes is in favor of the report. Gina Argento? Yes. Bogdan Bakarowski? Yes. Lisa Vermonti? Yes. Gina Barros? Yes. I'm sorry? Gina Barros? Yes. Tian Burks? Yes. Eric Brzezidis? Yes. Thomas Burroughs. Yes. Iris Cabrera. Yes. Phil Caponegro. Frank Carbone. Yes. Stephen Chesler. Yes. Michael Chiricella. Yes. Teresa Cinciata. Giovanni D'Amato. Yes. Aaron Drinkwater. Arthur Dibonowski. Yes. T. Willis Elkins. Yeah. Julia Amanda Foster. Yes. Joel Goldstein. Joel Gross. Yes. Katie Denny Hurwitz. Yes. Sonia Iglesia. Yes. Moisha Indig. Rosanna Kaminsky. Yes. Thank you. Ryan Coonan. In I'm sorry. Abstain. 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 Thank you. Yoel Landau. Marie Lianza. Yes. Abraham Leibovitz. Yoel Lowe. Trina McKeever. Yes. Sante Maselli. Yes. Toby Moskovitz. Martin Needleman. Yes. Rabbi Needleman. Yes. Oh, I thought that was Marty Needleman. 
<laughs> okay. Yes. Martin Edelman? Edelman, yes. Karen Nieves? Yes. Thank you. Mary Damark? Yes. Janice Peterson? Yes, but Marty is trying to get on because he called Dana me before. Rackman. Bella Sable? Yes. Isaac Sulfur? Yes. Robert Solano? Yes. Del Teague? Yes. Tommy Torres? William Vega? Yes. Maria Vieta? Steven Weiberg? Yes. Simon Weiser? Yes. Jerry, I didn't unmute it, but I want to say yes. This is Tish. So noted. 34 yes, zero no, one abstention. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. You can continue, but uh, Tom. Uh, we're, uh, that's, that's the report. Um, okay, that concludes your report. Okay, uh, land use. Thank you. Okay, so we had a public hearing and a committee meeting on the one Java Street application for variance for uh, waterfront usage. Uh, one person at the public hearing, one person asked to speak. Uh, that person actually just spoke on behalf of unions, workers, uh, and, and reminded us of the need to provide living wages for the workers. So the, um, the application here involves only the waterfront. It doesn't involve the entire open, open space. And the variances requested were, first of all, regarding the, uh, the plantings that would be required on the screening buffer. Uh, they are asking to have uh, be allowed to have less than the required uh, height of four feet for evergreens and to have less than 50% evergreen species so that they could have more, there could be more visibility from, you know, from upland to, to see the, the waterfront. And then the other variances um, were regarding guardrails. They want to be allowed to have the existing non-complying guardrails that are now on the India Street Pier and they uh, asked to be allowed to add wooden guardrails on top of the, um, the conforming um, uh, metal uh, guardrails. So they presented the, the, the basic, the, you know, um, description and visual rendition for the overall project. The, the committee overall felt that it was a, a very nice um, plan, there will be step down, native planting, seeding groups, lawn space, tidal pools, riparian gardens. Uh, they'll, they plan to have exercise classes and performances on the, on the open space and uh, possibly even have par block parties. <clears throat> uh, several members of the committee expressed a, a, prefer a preference for possibly a slightly more fluid uh, design, but the majority of the committee members felt that they were okay with the design as it was, and they pointed out that that um, the developers had done a tremendous amount of outreach to the community uh, and and also to the uh, parks committee. So they felt that people had plenty of time to to participate in what the plan was, um, and so we ended the public hearing, and at the committee meeting at which we had a quorum. Uh, the committee voted to approve the variance regarding the screening buffer, which will allow much, much more visibility to the waterfront, to disapprove the variance allowing the current unsightly and non-conforming fencing that's currently on the pier, and to approve the addition of wooden tops on the guardrails surrounding the, the river reveal. Uh, the committee felt that the addition of the wood would blend nicely with the wooden benches. The committee also agreed to 
make a recommendation that the developer explore the possibility of making the design more fluid. But this is a recommendation. This was not uh, a, a condition. And uh, also rec to uh, recommend considering using native Virginia pines in the planning. So if we can vote on that all at one in one vote but, uh, as a package, uh, I would like to do that. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion, Trina. Is there a second? William Vega seconds. Trina, William Vega, roll call vote, please. Trina, what's your motion, please? My motion oh, is the, the motion is to um, to to accept the committee's um, recommendation as written and as um, described by Dell. As written in the report and described. As by written. Del. Thank you. It's a there's a written report. Thank you. Yeah. Gina Argento. Bogdan Bakarowski. Yes. Lisa Bamonte. Gina Jerry, Barros. sorry, I'm not sure if you heard me. Gina Argento said yes, sorry. So noted. Lisa Bamonte. Gina Barros. Tian Brooks. Yes. Eric Brzezidis. Yes. Tom Burroughs. Yes. Iris Cabrera. Yes. Phil Caponegro. Frank Carbone. Yes. Stephen Chesler. Yes. Michael Chiricella. Yes. Teresa Cinciata. Giovanni D'Amato. Aaron yes. Drinkwater. Yes. Aaron Drinkwater. Arthur Dibinowski. Yes. T. Willis Elkins. Yes. Julia Amanda Foster. Yes. Joel Goldstein. Joel Gross. Yes. Katie Denny Hurwitz. Yes. Sonia Iglesia. Yes. Moisha Indig. Bozena Kaminsky. Yes. Ryan Coonan. Yes. Yoel Landau. Marie Lianza. Abraham Leibovitz. Yoel Lowe. Trina McKeeva. Yes. Sante Maselli. Abstain. Toby Moskowitz. Martin Needleman. Rabbi Needleman. Yes. Karen Nieves. Yes. Mario Domerk. Yes. Janice Peterson. Yes. Dana Racklin. Bella Sable. Yes. Isaac Sofer. Yes. Robert Solano. Del Teague. Yes. Tommy Torres. William Vega. Yes. Yes. Maria Vieira. Yes. Can you hear Stephen, me? Yes. Stephen Weiberg. Yes. Simon Weiser. I'm in it. To seven. Yes. Yes. Thirty yes, zero no, one abstention. Motion carries. Okay. Thank okay, you, thank Jerry. You. That's the end of my report. Thank you, Dale. Excuse me, Madam Budget, Gina. Oh, okay. <clears throat> okay. Good evening. Um, this is the capital budget report. On um, October seven, we had a meeting on the capital budget process for the fiscal year twenty twenty three. Committee members who are present reviewed and discussed the written comments that were submitted to administration as addition to last year's document. All received the copy of report and revised documents. Yes. Also included in oh, I, also included in this report is a statement um, that highlights the committee's discussion. Noted of significance and importance in the statement is that per the 2020 census data. Brooklyn's population has increased by 9.2%. It is now the fourth largest city on the overall list after New York City and before Manhattan. Furthermore, of Brooklyn's 
neighborhoods Williamsburg and Greenpoint have experienced the greatest increase in population. Therefore, and this is part of our narrative and framework, this huge increase in the population of our district should benefit with a proportionate increase in funding. In this document, the district needs are numbered to designate our priorities. Also noted is the responsible agency and an explanation of our request. Um, and this will be the framework to work with um, in going toward the future. The following changes were made to last year's document. On the um, budget items, item number eight, MTA and YCAT, continuation, um, there was a modification. The continuation of the train station upgrading program was modified to include use the use train station, that's the J, M, and Z line, um, requesting surveillance cameras and improved lighting. There has been an increase in crime at this train station. On the expense budget items, item number 20 was moved to item number five, as per the community's need for more mental health services. Item number 14 was removed because funding for this type of program, as per um, OMB's response agency is decided, this was their response, it should be decided at the local level. It is recommended to contact the Borough Field Support Center for that school. This was an item, request funding improvement for the schools, such as more teaching resources, um, to include a new library for PS250 and installation of air conditioning for district schools. Item nine, 19 on trash removal and street cleanliness was modified to include the overspilling garbage cans and the need to address illegal dumping with requests for surveillance cameras and more sanitation personnel. And then we added item number 28. We request that seats and bus shelters be added to designated MTA bus stops. Um, Okay, my report was submit. My report was submitted, and I need a motion to approve um, the written report. I request a motion to approve the written report. Teague, I make a motion. I, I second that. Uh, I wish Joel Gross second. Who made the motion? Teague. Joel Grow second. I didn't hear the first. I didn't hear the first person. Teague, I made oh, a motion. Dale. Dell and Joe Gross. Uh, uh, Jerry, can we have a roll call vote, please? Gina Argento. Yes. Bogdan Barkarowski. Lisa Bamonte. Gina Barros. Yes. Tian Brooks. Yes. Eric Berzadis. Yes. Tom Burrows. Chair, Jerry Bogdan is yes. Thank you. Thank Tom you. Burrows. Iris Cabrera? Yes. Phil Caponegro? Oh, I said yes, Jerry, sorry. Thank you, Phil Caponegro. Frank Carbone? Yes. Thank you, Stephen Chesler? Yes. Michael Chiricella? Yes. Teresa Cinciata? Yes. Thank you. Giovanni D'Amato? Yes, yes. Thank you, Aaron Drinkwater? Arthur Dibinowski? Yes. T. Willis Elkins? Yeah. Joey Amanda Foster. Yes. Thank you. Joel Goldstein. Joel Gross. Yes. Katie Denny Horwitz. Yes. Sonia Iglesia. Yes. Moisha Indig. Rosanna Kaminsky. Yes. Thank you. Ryan Coonan. No. No. Joel Landau. Marie Lanza. Yes. Thank you. Abraham Leibovitz. Joel Lowe. Trina McKeever? Yes. Sante Maselli? Abstain. Toby Moskowitz? Martin Niederman? Uh, Rabbi Niederman? Yes. Karen Nieves? Yes. Mario Domerick? Yes. Janice Peterson? Dana Racklin? Yes. Jan. Bella Sable? Yes. Isaac Sulfur. Yes. Robert Solano. Del Teague. Yes. Tommy Torres. William Vega. 
Yes. Maria Vienna. Yes. Thank you. Stephen Weidberg. Yes. Simon Weiser. Yes. Jerry, Lisa Bamonte, yes. I'm sorry I had uh, connection difficulties. So noted. Thank you. Uh, Jerry, do, do you have me? Yes, Bogdan? Yes, I do. Thank you. Thirty-three yes, one no, zero abstention. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. Does that conclude your report, uh, Gina? One abstention, Jerry. It was me. Yes, thank you. In conclusion, You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, Transportation Committee report, Eric Zaitis. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, report as written, but we did have four motions um, that I were all uh, approved unanimously by the committee without abstention or objection. Um, if possible, I'd like to read the motions and if we can vote on them all on block. Madam Chair? Yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, so uh, the committee took up uh, the school safety program that was presented last month. Um, that uh, there was some discussion about the lack of um, uh, green infrastructure as part of the plan. Uh, it seemed like uh, short sighted that with uh, tearing up the streets, they weren't putting in any bioswales or any um, green infrastructure to mitigate flood damage, uh, which is uh, expected to only get worse in the city. Um, However, uh, we did um, motion to uh, approve um, the DOT school safety plan uh, for safety improvements and demand that the DOT coordinate with DDC and DEP. Sorry, I lost it. Uh, coordinate with DEP and DDC to include stormwater management and green infrastructure prior to construction. That was the first motion. Um, second, uh, second motion uh, came later in the discussion. It was um, uh, taking up old business. Uh, the community uh, motion was to have the community board draft a letter to NYC DOT to alter the evening rush hour regulations on Lee Avenue from Taylor Street to Flushing Avenue on Fridays for religious accommodation. Uh, the next item is also old business, community board one to draft a letter to DSNY and NYC DOT to remove the night cleaning regulations on Wallabout Street. Um, Flushing. Oh, okay, hang on, hang on. So, yeah, there was a discussion after after the meeting, the way it was drafted. Um, so it's to um, I need to amend what's in the report. Um, it's the the location is actually Flushing Avenue from Frank from Franklin Street to Kent Avenue and Kent Avenue from Flushing Avenue till Wallabout Street. Um, this has become we've talked about this a number of times in the committee and at the board. Um, it's now more of a residential block and does not require the um, uh, the uh, the night regs. Um, and so uh, the motion is to um, uh, <laughs> take out the night cleaning regulations. Sorry, um, in that in those parameters. Um, and uh, the last item came up during the the um, school safety discussion, but um, it's uh, more general. Uh, and we see this a lot where the, the city will come to us with plans that are somewhat fully formed and then we're asked to comment and vote on them. Uh, this motion was that the community board won uh, to draft a letter to NYC DOT uh, DEP and DDC to coordinate and advise the board of future projects 
in advance of the design phase to improve planning and community input um, to avoid having them come to us at the last minute saying they can't put in bios wheels or whatever. Um, so those were the four motions and I'll ask for an approval. Sonia Iglesias, make a motion. Simon Weiser, second. second. Simon Weiser. Sonia Iglesias and, uh, and Simon Weiser, can I have a roll call vote, please? I think just. Oh. Can we have a roll call vote, please, Jerry? What's the motion? To approve the committee's four recommendations as written, uh, Mr. Bezaitis? Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Well, I, I do have to change the language on the motion from the report, but as I as I explained um, the parameters for the night cleaning regulations, I can I can re I explained it to the board, but I can resubmit the actual language uh, later tonight. So, do you want to repeat that for the record? So, repeat which items are being voted on as written, and which is the one, and then okay. just re repeat sure. the one that you're making it, the proposing the changes to. And yes, then sir. we'll we'll need the uh, the motions again, please. Okay, so it's motion one to approve the school safety plan with uh, demands for um, green infrastructure. Uh, motion two, which was yeah. to uh, uh, alter the um, uh, the rush hour evening rush hour regulations to for religious accommodations on Friday. And the last, as written, was to um, send a letter to, to DD, uh, DDC, DEP, and uh, DOT to coordinate with the board, uh, to coordinate with themselves, and then advise the board before the design phase, as those are as and, written. And that was motion three? Uh, that was motion four. Four, okay. And then just read the revised motion uh, three, please. Okay, oh so goodness. community That's board right. one to draft a letter to DSNY yeah. and NYC DOT to remove the night cleaning regulations on Flushing Avenue from Franklin Street to Kent Avenue and Kent Avenue from Flushing Avenue to Wallabout Street. We okay, Jerry? Yeah, I'm okay. We just need the. Uh, Sonny Iglesias, uh, make the motion. Madam Chair. Yes, yes, Jerry. We need you to acknowledge the the, the re acknowledge the motion in the second. Joe Gross. Okay. Uh, Sonia Iglesias, and was it uh, Joe Gross? Yes. Okay. Can we have the roll call vote, please? Certainly. Necessary changes. Gina Argento. Yes. Bogdan Bakarowski. Yes. Lisa Bamonte. Yes. Gina Barros. Yes. Tian Brooks. Eric Berzetis. Tian Brooks, yes. So noted. Mr. Berzetis? Yes. Tom Burroughs? Yes. Iris Cabrera? Yes. Bill Caponegro. Frank Cobone? Yes. Stephen Chesler? Yes. Michael Chiricello. Michael Chiricello. Yes. Teresa Cinciata. Tish. Michael Chiricello is a yes, Jerry. I got you. Tish. Yes. Thank you. I can see you. Giovanni D'Amato. Yes. Aaron Drinkwater. Arthur Dibinowski. Yes. T. Willis Elkins. Yes. Julia Amanda Foster. Yes. Joel Goldstein. Joel Gross. Yes. Katie Denny Horowitz. Sonia Iglesia. Yes. Moisha Indig. Rosina Kaminsky. Yes. Thank you. Ryan Coonan. Yes. Joel Landau. Marie Lianza. Yes. Thank you. Abraham Leibovitz. Yo Lowe. Trina McKeever. Yes. Sante Maselli. Yes. Toby Moskowitz. Martin Niederman. Rabbi Niederman. Yes. 
Karen Nieves. Yes. Mary O'Domark. Yes. Janice Peterson. Yes. Dana Racklin. Ella Sable. Yes. Isaac Sofer. Yes. Robert Solano. Del Teague. Yes. Tommy Torres. William Vega. Yes. Maria Vieta. Yes. Stephen Weiber. Yes. Simon Weiser. Yes. Thirty-four yes, zero no, zero abstention. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. Does that conclude your report, Eric? I, I just want to mention one other thing. We we did try to have a discussion on district needs, um, uh, the statement of district needs, but we ran out of time to get into it uh, in a substantive way. Um, I just want to note that um, uh, Willis Elkins submitted uh, a request um, to be added if. If possible, otherwise we'll we'll take it up uh, with DOT at some point to redesign Kingsland Avenue from Greenpoint Avenue to North Henry Street behind the wastewater treatment plant for pedestrian and bicycle safety, parking improvements, and truck traffic flow to better serve both local businesses and visitors to the Newtown Creek Nature Walk entrance open in 2021. Um, I'm pretty sure that um, we've been trying to get this for a while, and um, it's something that we really we really do need so and with that that concludes my report thank you eric um verbal report uh board budget with maria vieira thank you so much madam chair good evening everyone um thank you to the board budget committee members who met on october 19th um to discuss um the current expenses against the approved budget um we discussed setting a threshold whereby the board would request an approval of the purchase of an item that exceeds um, a $500 um, um, limit. Um, we all agreed that these items would speak to particularly furniture, equipment, um, and one piece of material because the budget is so that there's really not one item, not many items here that would actually exceed that amount. There are very few lines that um, that go above the thousand dollar mark. So um, we agreed the board would request approval of the budget committee when and if purchasing one item that goes above a $500 um, threshold. Um, another thing that we discussed, um, and by the way, we do request we need a vote. We need the approval of the full board to um, to move forward with that um, recommendation. So, would um, does anybody want to make a motion? Do you agree? Disagree? Is there, is there a motion? So the issue is: Do we approve allowing the board to make decisions on purchases where they would only seek the approval of the committee if if spending more than $500 on one item. Is there, is there? Joe Gross. To approve, Wait, uh, I have a question. Yes. So if their expenditure is under 500, they would just be approved by your committee or by the board office or? Um, no approval. They, we don't need an approval. We already have an approved budget. We approved the budget back in June. So, what we are looking to do is ensure that if there is 1 item being purchased by the board or, or um, in consideration of purchase, that if it exceeds a $500 threshold, that it should be approved by the committee just to make sure that there was prudence when actually bidding for the price to make sure that if there were other um, considerations, other options um, that they were all taken into account when um thinking about making this purchase okay in so other words say, any purchase over five hundred dollars would need approval from the budget committee correct right. but then would the board have to approve that afterwards or at the next meeting or well if we if we all agree 
that we trust the 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 board budget committee, then um, it would be a go. But here's where it, it gets um, a little bit um, iffy. If the board requires that we go back to full board for purchases, then we'd have to wait for the next meeting to make sure that the full board is on board. Pardon, no, no, pardon the the the. Um, well, I, I, well, I hope that you guys can trust. <laughs> well, I assume that would be reported at the in your committee report Absolutely. the next May. Okay. Absolutely. And there is a reconciliation that is shared by Jerry every single month that shows um, a spreadsheet with all of the expenses for the month and the balances to date. Joel Gross for a motion. Well, I have a, I have a question, Del T. I have my hand up here. So yep. when you say that that um, purchased by the board, do you mean purchased by the office? The office, uh, the office. This is the 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 okay. the, the yeah. Thanks. The office, okay. not us, Thank not you. the board as a body. Right, the office, right, but the office. Okay. Yeah. Thank Joel you. Joel Gross is making a motion. Okay, a motion is on the floor to approve a budget of anything. Anything spent over five hundred dollars have to go to the budget committee for approval. Joe Gross, is there a second? Julia Foster seconds. David, Roll call vote, please. Gina Argento? Yes. Bogdan Bakarowski? Yes. Lisa Bamonte? Yes. Gina Barros? Yes. Tian Brooks? Eric Bezaitis? Yes. Thomas Burroughs? Yes. Iris Cabrera? Yes, Eddie. Bill Caponegro? Frank Carbone. Yes. Stephen Chesler. Yes. Michael Chiricella. Teresa Cinciata. Yes. Giovanni D'Amato. Yes. Aaron Drinkwater. Arthur Dibinowski. T. Willis Elkins. Yes. 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 I got too many yeses and I'm not sure who made those yeses. So Arthur? Yes. Arthur's? Yes. So noted. Willis? Yes. Thank you. Julia Amanda Foster? Yes. Thank you. Joel Goldstein? Joel, yes. Joel Gross? Yes. Katie Denny Hurwitz? Yes. Sonia Iglesia? Yes. Moisha Indig? Rosina Kaminsky? Brian Coonan? Yo Landau. Marie Leanza. Yes. Abraham Leibovitz. Yo Lowe. Trina McKeever. Yes. Sante Maselli. Sante Michelli, yes. Toby Moskowitz. Yes. Martin Needleman. Rabbi Niederman. Yes. Aaron Nieves. Yes. Mario Damark. Yes. Janice Peterson. Yes. Dana Racklin, Bella Sable, yes. Isaac Sofer, Robert Solano, Del Teague, yes. Tommy Torres, William Vega, yes. Maria Vieta, yes. Stephen Weiberg, yes. Simon Weiser, yes. Yes, sir. Yes, vote for Mr. Chiricello. 33 yes, zero no, zero abstention. Motion carries. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you, everyone. So the board budget committee will meet again um, in three months as we have set our schedule for quarterly meetings. Um, our next meeting will be in January. Don't know the day yet, but January 2022. Thank you so much. Thank you, Maria. That concludes our committee reports. Um, Parks Department, uh, is Mary back? Mary, are you here? Mary here from Parks? Okay, I thought she was going to be here where Parks meant as written. Are there any announcements from the elected officials? Mary's here. She says I'm here. Yeah, Would I'm here. Like Someone just unmuted me. 
Okay, thank you, Mary. How you doing? Welcome back. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. It's good to be back. We're doing well here. I had, um, for those who don't know, I had a little girl, um, Ivy. Great. She's 23 weeks now. So five months and getting bigger and bigger. I, great, great. We wish you all the best. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, Vinny Piccolo is also here. Um, I know he helped a lot while I was out and I really appreciated his help. So um, I think he, um, I think he did a really good job of addressing all your concerns. If there's any other questions, just let us know. Okay, thank you, Mary. Yep. Um, are there any elected to speak, any elected officials that signed up to speak? Are there any elected officials here that didn't sign up to speak? Excuse me, um, Madam Chair? Yes. Um, Leslie Wright from New York State Parks wrote in the Q&A that she had a trouble connecting to audio earlier and asked if she could still speak. I had gotten a, a note that she wanted to speak. She couldn't get audio and she wanted to speak at the December meeting. Okay, but she has audio now? I believe so. Okay, if she has audio now. Mary? I mean, uh, Leslie. Hello, Madam Chair, can you hear me? Yes. Thank goodness. I apologize for the earlier difficulties and thank you very much for allowing me to speak. Um, so I, I just wanted to take a moment of everyone's time to speak about Marsha P. Johnson State Park. Um, the park had uh, enjoyed a, a nice peaceful summer. Lots of folks uh, visited and our park house is fully open. Um, I'm told that our park bathrooms are delightfully clean and, and we're just really happy to have those open for everyone. Programming in the park house has also kicked in. If you follow the park on social media, you can get all the announcements about the programming there and other activities in the park. Um, as we last left off with respect to the, the construction and capital improvements in the park. Uh, you may all recall that um, with the, the, um, the, the change in design, thanks to the, the positive community feedback, uh, we were required by the New York State Comptroller to rebid much of the site work at the park. Uh, the stormwater management infrastructure uh, and the uh, porous concrete pavers or pavement rather, as well as a lot of the uh, garden landscaping. Um, and that that government procurement has proceeded. We have opened the contracts. We're going through the steps to get the, the contractor in contract. Uh, by the December meeting, I hope to be able to come back and make a full presentation outlining the timeline for this work. Uh, but in general terms, I can say that the construction should begin shortly after the new year and wrap up by the end of May. In addition, and that's all in 2022. In addition, um, as as also last discussed when we when I presented back. I guess in the summer, um, uh, my agency's commissioner has convened an art advisory committee. Uh, the committee is composed of um, members of Marsha P. Johnson's family, members from the uh, Black Trans Working Group that helped us uh, design and create the interpretive signs that are now installed in the park that tell the story of Marsha's life. <clears throat> excuse me, and the, uh, her, her life's work, uh, together with uh, members from the community. Steve Chesler is on this committee, as well as representatives uh, from my agency. That committee has convened to start the work of um, vetting uh, public art pieces to go in the park significantly a gate, a decorative gateway treatment in the park, uh, and then also a signature piece of public art that will be placed at a location to be determined by all in the park. It'll be a permanent piece of art. 
Um, the art advisory committee also includes, <laughs> excuse me, two public art um, professionals who have been working in the realm of public art in, in Brooklyn in particular for many, many years. Um, and I hope to regularly report to this board, to the Parks Committee, uh, and to the community as a whole on the status of, of this committee, as well as, um, you know, uh, open meetings in the park itself to gain larger community input in this process. Um, that is my update. And once again, I thank you for the time. You're welcome, Leslie. Is there any old business? Uh, yes, Madam Chair. Can I can I ask the the commissioner? Will it be a representative from this board on the uh, art committee? Y yes, Steve Chesler is on the art committee, the art advisory committee. Oh, but will there be a representative appointed by the board chair to this committee? Um, we. Um, I, that's that's a very good question. If 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 um, I, I'm happy to take I'm I'm happy to take recommendations on that. Okay, uh, Chester, you had a question. Yeah, it was just regarding the um, the new the uh, time limitations on meetings, and um, specifically the committees. I, I was under the impression that the limit was 10 o'clock, but I'm hearing from some of the committee reports that they are they're using nine o'clock as the limit. So I just wanted to get, um, confirm what what the time what the limit is. Well, the committee can set the committee can set their time from six to ten if they want to leave. If we want to quit at nine, that's them. You know, but. Uh... We want we want to keep the meeting structured. We want them to be beneficial. We want them to be educational, and we want people to learn in the committees and take the time to discuss the issues and not get into personalities. But that's what we, that's why the time is streamlined because the meetings become abusive, verbally abusive, and everything else. We want to, we want the meetings to be constructive, and the time constraint we feel like it will help us curb the meeting where we can get the business of the board done. Mm -hmm. oh, uh, makes sense. Yeah, I just wanted to get clarity on the actual time it was nine or ten. But um, it sounds like the committee chairs have flexibility to go to stop earlier if they want. But ten is can go to ten if they want. Yes, we'd like for the meetings to end at ten. If you know, okay. You know, if you can, if you want to end them earlier, that's you know. But preferably nine o'clock would be great. Because we have staff that's working that has to travel and go home. So we prefer nine o'clock. Any other questions? Uh, Any Madam, other Madam Chair, Sante Micheli. Yes. Yeah, no, um, uh, back on the hours, I mean, I understand it's really fair, probably it's, it's a good system. Uh, just a concern, uh, uh, looking at the artwork that the SLA review committee, and especially in light of the number of license, you know, and I, I know they abstain from some vote because uh, we can end it up in a situation where we're going to do a disservice to the community and there is all these accumulated licenses and not that I want to give them more, more work, absolutely not, but in reality, uh, how is the committee going to deal with that time restriction as it is overwhelmed? And every month there's going to be postponement and postponement. So just a question and probably the committee themselves, they should probably uh, question the issue. But I fear that we disservice the community by ignoring the reality of it. We don't feel like we're doing a disservice to the committee, to the community. The biggest complaints was to the committee. You got people that go to work, that people got families at home, everybody's working from home, people haven't had their dinner. We got a lot of complaints, especially from SLA. These meetings are not all night gatherings. Any other questions or comments? I have new Madam business. Chair. Madam yes. Chair. Yes. 
just again on the hours i i fully understand uh the the rationale for that especially in my committee which gets very hot um as we all know um i think it's working out for the transportation committee uh in general the nine o'clock yes. stop um but for the sla because the volume of work is so long we are talking internally about you know trying to streamline the process a little bit but until we can do that it really is useful to stay until at least 10 to work through all the applications because you know we had to cold over so many from the last meeting and partly because we we missed the september meeting but um it's going to be a monthly occurrence where we're we're you know pushing <clears throat> applications to the next month like 10 or 15 which just compounds and and so um i all i can say is we're working internally to try to make it better and tom could speak to this if he likes but um it, it is useful to have the to have a 10 o'clock stop especially for sla because of the volume yeah. of the of the work yeah okay I, I must backtrack i think i made a mistake i think the committee did vote on nine o'clock to end the meetings you know but we know that meetings can go over but you know we got a lot of uh, complaints from sla we got them from uh transportation and we you know from the community from the, from the regular board meeting hearing so we got we got we got to use our time to conduct business Chair, I think you also mentioned that it would be up to the committee chair to, if it has to be up until 10 o'clock, uh, that would be okay, right? It's nine o'clock, but if, but if the, the, head, the chairperson needs more time, 10 o'clock would be the deadline. Well, the, the committee, like I said, the committee voted, the executive committee voted for, for nine o'clock, for the meeting to end at nine o'clock. I made a mistake, I apologize. You know, but you know, we you know we want all the meetings to end. But I notice sometimes committed the meetings go over, but we nine want the meetings to be over by nine o'clock. Uh, Jerry, you had something you want to say? I think somebody was trying to say something. Yeah, not regarding this though. I just wanted to to give a a little bit of a footnote and an acknowledgement. For that first item that we heard on the agenda tonight, uh, many people that are on the board now were not around then. And I just think it bears repeating the hours and hours that went into making that project a reality. And I especially want to acknowledge the, the late assemblyman uh, Vito Lopez. Exactly. Without, without his leadership on that project, that would still be under developed property to this day. And he said, he, literally set the cornerstones to making that project happen and bring all those groups together. And I think it's worth mentioning. And I thank you for the moment. Thank you, Jerry. Yeah, I remember I was part of I was part of the charrettes and all that stuff going all the way back when it began. I remember the fights and people closing down the schools meetings and the police being called and everything. It was really a contentious situation. And like you said, we owe it all to, Vito, uh, to Assemblyman Vito Lopez for getting us this far because it was a real battle getting this project together. So we really owe him a debt and, of gratitude. And 100% affordable. I'm sure he's smiling. Yes. He's up there listening to you, Jerry. <laughs> you know what, Maria? I said he's up there listening. He's happy about it. Yes, yes. So it's, it's great for the community. It was a long fight. And thank God, you know, the groups came together and they're yeah. working on it and look like it's gonna be a benefit to the community. Mm. Is there anything else? Uh, Del Teague, I just have a new business. It's an announcement. Uh, at best, this announcement is very frivolous, but my crazy band, Squirrels from Hell, is gonna play uh, on November 20th at Pete's uh, Candy Store, San Lorima Street at 10 p.m. So. I don't get to play that often in the neighborhood. Usually we're up in Manhattan, but um, anybody wants to come, you're still awake at, at 10 o'clock on November, tw uh, November 20th. I'd love to see you there in a very where, where different that, situation. Delta? Where is it again, Del? It's, um, it's Lorimer Street, 709 Lorimer Street, Pete's Candy Store. Uh, okay. It's a nice place. And um, anyway, 
it, there's no cover charge. It's free. Okay. And um, yeah, 10 o'clock, November 20th. Thank you. It starts at 10. It starts. Yeah, we start at 10. I mean, there were bands before us. There's a band before us. Um, but you'll come on at 10. But we would come on at 10. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Dale, for the update. Thank you. Thank Enjoy. You. Have fun. Yeah. Any other any other comments? Just want to thank Jerry for his comments. Okay, if no other comments, can I have a motion to adjourn? I have a motion what? to adjourn. Vega seconds. Okay, good night, everybody. Take care, stay healthy, stay safe, and thank you for being good participants and getting us good out night. at a decent hour. Have, have a happy Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving all. Yes. Oh, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Happy Turkey Thanksgiving. Day. Good night. Happy Thanksgiving. Good night. Good night, good night. Good night. Good night everyone. Thank you very much. Good night. Peace out, homies. Good night. <laughs> good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.